we are starting off this new year with a huge transformation. Hey everyone, I am Yami, your Latina Next Door. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we are giving a makeover to another area in my home. Well, actually, three areas. My entrance, my dining room, and the transition space between my dining room and my kitchen. It's gonna be a big one. Now, if you recall, this is what the area looked like when we moved in. The area had very outdated beige walls. It had popcorn ceiling that we removed. The floors we also replaced, as well as all of the base molding. We painted everything, and this area used to be the main living space, but for us, it works better as a dining room area. For this video, I have partnered with Lamps Plus. Not only do they carry beautiful lighting options for your home, they also provide a variety of home decor accents as well as furniture pieces to style your home. I'll be sharing more about that throughout the video. Now, if you enjoy DIY makeover reveals, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss out on any more videos like this. All right, let's get started. So this is what the space has been looking like. It's still unfinished in many areas. As you can see, that light fixture is still there. We took off the fan blades when we were removing the popcorn ceilings and we never put anything back on because honestly, we just weren't sure what we were gonna do with the space. And then we still needed to decide on what type of light fixture we wanted. Also, we downsized when we moved into this house. And as you can see, there's just a mix match of furniture in this space because we got rid of a lot of furniture and we only kept some key pieces that we needed to work right away. So nothing really goes together. There is no flow and there's also issues with lighting because as you can see, some areas are more lit than others. Now, even though we're replacing several furniture pieces, we will be keeping the dining room table. This dining room table we purchased on Facebook Marketplace after we sold our previous table that just didn't fit with our aesthetic anymore. So the new pieces we're getting for this space will have to complement this table. Now, one other piece that I have in the space is the secretary and it will eventually get a makeover. However, I wasn't able to pull it off before this video aired. Now, in my last home, I was really into the coastal farmhouse decor. For this style of house, I'm actually gearing toward a more a cottage farmhouse vibe with that high-end look still. Now, the first thing I do whenever I want to make over a space is I create a mood board. And I do have a video tutorial on that if you guys want to check it out. I'll link to it below. But this is kind of what I was going for. And it was during December when I was creating this. So that's why you see a Christmas tree. I wanted it to have a cozy cottage farmhouse feel. So I went ahead and inserted a similar fireplace as well as my dining room table so that I can go ahead and start working around it. So here you see two different areas and to the left you see a little table that I want to use to replace that really big and out of place blue table that I had at my entrance. I want something where I can put stuff on but it won't be too overwhelming so I wanted just a small table there with some task lighting. Then directly to the right of that you see like a buffet style table with some nice table lamps and a mirror. I wanted something lighter because the piece that was there was actually an entertainment piece that used to be in the keeping room of our last house. And while it worked for that purpose, it's kind of dark and heavy and it just does not suit the space, nor does it go with the current dining room table. Now I don't end up going with this exact buffet table, but what you will see is gonna be even more amazing. And then finally, for this spot right here, I wanted to make sure I had a beautiful chandelier that would go over my dining room table and have that cottage farmhouse feel. Next, for this space right here, as you can see right away, it is so dark. So I knew I wanted to add some lighting and then also give it a facelift because right now it was looking so dingy and it just did not have a purpose other than just store some random items. I wanted it to be a focal piece because this is the wall that you see when you come down from our upstairs. Now, I had originally thought about making this a pantry area because my kitchen does not have a pantry and I've been using the closet down the hall. However, now that we moved our laundry room down to the basement, I have an entire laundry space upstairs that I can transform into a pantry. 
So I decided to go all out and make this a really beautiful feature wall with sconce lighting on either side, shelving, and a beautiful piece underneath that I can use for storage as well as a server. In order to see everything together in the actual space, I took the shot of this picture and I added all the details so that I can see how everything would come together perfectly. So first things first, it was time to remove all of the unwanted furniture and pieces from the walls that we weren't going to be using for this space. It was finally time to remove this old fan base and add a beautiful new chandelier. And I have to give a shout out to my amazing husband, the Latino engineer who did an amazing job on the lighting in this space. Once the chandelier was installed, it was time for the feature wall. These sconces as well as the chandelier are from Lamps Plus and the first thing we needed to figure out is where to place them on our wall. Once we decided, we went ahead and marked them and then with this little handy tool, the Latino engineer made the holes in order to add the sconces. The Latino engineer actually hardwired these sconces into our existing electrical system. And yes, he definitely knows how to do this. All right, so this is the wall behind the sconces, right? And Nelson, what'd you do here? Yes, we needed a... Uh... And we can go around the other side to get a wire from the sconce. It's basically right here and all the way over there. Mm -hmm. And the easiest way to do that for us was to cut behind the wall. And I don't know if you can see Insert this. that really long so, <laughs> drill bit. <laughs> so it's a drill bit that's flexible like this. And that's really how people go and do remodel applications when they're running wire. So this drill bit, it's about four, five foot long, and it's drilled through, you come around here. So it's drilling through each of the studs that's in the wall so that you can feed through, like wire through the stud, correct? That's it. All right, so that's over there. <laughs> so you can see, there's where the sconce is, here's where the sconce is. This is an extra hole, but this is the back wall, and the drill bit just drills behind here inside the wall through each stud and it is right here sweet so i'm just going to attach the wire and just fish it back and then that way you'll have the wire run from here to here and then the switch is going to be over here After the wire was fed through and the boxes installed for each of the sconces, it was time for me to give this wall its very own treatment. Now since I wanted this to become a feature wall, I wanted to do something very special and stencil this wall. I got this stencil online and I'll go ahead and link to it in the description box below if you guys want to check it out. But I love stenciling walls because it is an inexpensive way of updating one feature wall and creating something amazing. And so what I did was I started prepping and then I started painting. Now you will see that the actual stencil color that I use is actually very light and not too different from what's already up there, but I did that on purpose because I did want a subtle look to the wall without overwhelming it with too much pattern. Now one of the key things about stenciling is that you have to make sure that your roller is evenly coated with paint and then you have to remove as much paint from that roller as possible. Then take your time over the stencil making sure that each area is covered the same way.
after I stenciled the wall, it was time to install the sconces. After we knew that the lights were functioning properly, it was time to add the remaining plates and then bring in the furniture piece. Now this piece is also from Lamps Plus and it actually fits the entire length of the wall where it's going to go perfectly. It's a beautiful piece that's not only going to give me style but also storage. And I do love the way that they were packaged because let me tell you the packaging on this made sure that nothing was damaged when it arrived. Now for the shelves that went above this piece, I wanted to keep it simple and the Latino engineer cut some wood pieces for me. That way I can have two shelves above. And what I did was I stained them with the same stain that I used for my plate rack that's in my kitchen to kind of tie everything together. Next up, it was time to install the shelves and we use some simple black brackets that we found at Home Depot. And since these were not a kit and we were putting these items together, we needed to make sure that they were nice and centered as well as level. And once we were done with the first shelf, it was time to install the second one. Now, since the screws that we had to use to install these brackets were silver, I went back and took some metallic black paint and I basically just painted right over them to camouflage them so that you would not see them. Now, once the main components of that wall were completed, I moved over to my entrance area because there was one thing that I've been wanting to do since I moved in and that was tackle that front door and give it a facelift. Now, nothing would make me happier than replacing this door. However, it's not in the budget right now. So the best way to change it up is by giving it a new color. And that's exactly what I did. I started by removing the command hook on the front of the door. And then with some soap and water, I gave both sides of the front door a good cleaning. Then afterwards, I taped up the hardware before I started painting. And what I like to do whenever I paint doors is always go in all the nooks and crevices with a brush and then come over it with a roller. This will give you the smoothest finish. This also happened to be one of the most brightest days this winter. So I apologize for the lighting. It will change in just a sec. Now you can either move from top to bottom or from bottom to top. I chose to start at the bottom of the door this time and work my way up because the top of the door has a lot of detail that would take a lot longer to paint. Now for the top of this door, I did use a small brush for those details. However, I don't like to tape off anything. I think it adds a lot more work. And if you get anything on the glass, all you have to do is wipe it off with a damp cloth or use a thin razor to remove it after it's dry and it's super easy to remove. So there's no need to do tape for something like this. Now 
Now once I was done with the front side of the door, then I proceeded to do the same thing to the inside of it and I gave both sides of the door two coats. After that was done, I wanted to move on to the windows because I wanted to add some window treatments. I wanted something elegant but more substantial since the curtain rods that we currently had were a little bit small. And since the windows that we have in our space, my husband and I actually created these beautiful large casings around the window which we'll be sharing very shortly on how to do this yourself but we needed something just to add on to it. However, I didn't wanna just leave it plain because I felt like it was really missing something. Now the window treatments that I'm using for this space are actual window treatments that I had in my previous home. Now these curtains were not very wide because they were meant for narrower windows. However, I had two sets, so what I did was I added two on either side to make them look fuller. I simply made sure that the curtains were folded in and that you did not see any seams between both panels. Then it was time for our last piece of furniture to arrive and this is the piece that's gonna go where the big dark piece was originally in the space. So we unpacked this one as well and we brought it in. All right, so what's so amazing about this is, is that the finish on this piece matches almost exactly to the finish on my new uh, table and chairs. So I'm really excited that this is gonna look really good together. Now we needed to place this piece on its back because we needed to add its feet. But assembly was so easy. So I just took out the styrofoam that was keeping these shelves in place and um, I must say Nelson picked this piece up he he saw it and he was like that's the one we need for the space and it looks pretty awesome and I was a little bit skeptical about the red interior at first but let me tell you something I just love how it pops up against the white exterior I think it's really cool and definitely a unique feature of this piece Now it's time for the fun part. It is time to decorate the space and bring back all the beautiful touches and even extra lighting to add even more warmth and light to the space. Now these new lamps are also from Lamps Plus and I just wanna share a comparison of what the difference is between the ones that used to be there, which are the ones on the left, and the new ones. I love the brand new style, the rustic shape of them, but their elegance and also their added height. I'm so happy to finally have a place where I can store my place setting pieces. And I was finally able to unpack some of my boxes and use the home decor items from my previous home to display in my new one. And I know you all have seen this arrangement many times before. I have removed all of the sparkly Christmassy berries that I had in it and then I left all of the greenery inside and I just simply added some white flowers from Dollar Tree to give it a more neutral look and it's a perfect way to transition it into winter slash springish decor. 
Now for above the fireplace, I took my clock that I had over my fireplace in my last house and we decided to install it above the fireplace here. Now this fireplace will eventually get a makeover that's gonna be a little reminiscent of my fireplace at my last house. But for now, we're just gonna add the clock and some decorative pieces for the mantle. Now for the piece that has the glass in front, I was at Ikea a few days ago and I found these beautiful storage boxes that I think would fit perfectly to hide some items and not make that area look as cluttered when I'm storing items in it. Now they came in both these tan and gray ones, however the tan ones worked a little bit more for my aesthetic in this new home. All right, before the reveal, let's take a trip down memory lane and look at what this space used to look like before. What's so amazing about this space is that I no longer lack light. With all of the amazing options that Lamps Plus has to offer, I was able to brighten the space up and now I can light it up in any way that I choose to create mood lighting or to brighten the entire space. Well, uh, that is it for this makeover. I hope you guys enjoyed it. There was a lot of spaces that I needed to tackle in this space, but I think it's all coming together nicely. Let me know which one of the areas was your favorite. I am super excited to start off the new year with a newly made entrance, dining room area, transition area, and of course, my kitchen. Thank you so much to Lamps Plus for partnering with me in this video. I'll make sure to leave a link to their website in my description box below. Now, if you're interested in even more renovation updates, I do have a playlist of everything that we have done to this space since moving in, and I'll link to that as well. Don't forget to hit like if you enjoyed this video. I have a lot more projects coming at you this year and much more home decor and DIY inspiration. So don't forget to subscribe and I will see you guys in the next video. Until then, adios.